Jehova Malak, Ola Molamad, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis. Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios. Jehova Adonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Pantacreta, Kurios Tios Pistos. Olam Olam, Jehova Dabar. Shamiyamim Yatseb. I Basilion Kurios Otios O Pantacreta. Basilios Basilion Kai Kurios Kurion. Derek Emunabakar Misfat Shava. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. A training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath. In the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. In spite of all odd infinite circumstances, the word of Lord God alone reigneth forever and forever. And the will which God the Father called as the purpose in First Samuel chapter 3 and verse number 8. Again, the word what has been translated, which has to be very clearly learned for us. Since we are not able to understand these things, we are not able to realize the purpose of Lord God. The word, when we read in First Samuel chapter 3 and verse number 8, it says, And the Lord called Samuel again. The word again in the Hebrew is Yasaf. Y-A-S-A-P-H. It meant to say to do again or to increase. In simple words, to do more. And the word meant to say to continue again and again. Here is the third time when Lord of a God is calling Samuel, but Samuel knew not that it was Lord, he ran to Eli. Eli perceiving that it was Lord, he says, then the next time when Lord calls, you tell him, speak because your servant heareth. And the word here meant to say Shamma. And the word has a lot of meaning to meant to say, to do what he has heard by putting it into action. So here we find the word again, Yasaf. We go on sinning against the Lord again and again. We go on to grieve and squelch and wax and lie and resist the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit again and again. But here also, Lord God the Father, we need to learn, though we are of such rebellious nature, God the Father will come again and again, as we read that in Lamentations 3, 23 and 24. Followed by Zephaniah 3 5, again in Job 7 8, 17 and 18. In Lamentations 3, day by day, he's going to come for us to renew his mercies. Zephaniah 3 5, he's going to get day by day the judgment report of us. In Job 7 17 and 18, we read, moment by moment, he examines us whether we are doing his will or not. So, how great is Lord God in giving us this great work? If you would look, we are such kind of a rebellious, wretched nature that Lord our God comes again and again to teach us. That's the word Yasaf. So in spite of any odd circumstances in your life, whether it may rain or shine, whether they may be life or death, God the Father makes a provision so that every day, again and again, you can come back and learn the word of God. That's what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 through 4. 
he was inspecting them to look what was there in their hearts. Though their feet was not calloused, neither their garments waxed old. And that we meant to say the feet which haven't been taken into the consideration of having sicknesses or sores in the feet. Garments represents again their flesh. Every day God the Father gave them the manna to eat and they came to gather. That's what he meant to say. In spite of having their feet calloused, they would come. Their garments were waxed, they would come. If I was an amputated one, he would come because he knew very well without that food he cannot survive. That was the only food given to them to be survived. So keeping that in mind, dear brethren, God the Father comes up again and again to search in us that we are before him flawless. And this words in comparison with Psalms 38, we shall continue after this prayer. Because we have a lot of things to learn from that one single verse of Psalms 38.3. And in the Hebrew it is Psalms 38, 4. And our entire life has been constituted on that verse. If we don't have a testimony like Deuteronomy 31, 8, when Lord God the Holy Spirit records to us about the life of Moses, what he was, what he was walking, how he was, and how he wasn't been failed, and never he was into the terms of these worldly affairs. Here this verse of Psalms 38, 3 summarizes our life what we ought to be in the Lord, and if we don't be so, then what happens to us? The things which have been prepared and kept for us on today's date, again and again, Lord God the Father comes to renew this grace upon our lives. Though we grieve, squelch, wax and lie, more than that, He is coming up to give us His grace, so that He wants none to perish, Second Peter 3, 9, but He wants everyone to be saved in doing the will of God and the work of God. So keeping these things in mind, dear brethren, how we need to have a good consciousness towards Lord God, have a good repentance of mind because such kind of a great goodness of Lord God the Father should work, work in us that great repentance which could give to God the Father that He is absolutely fit and fine and happy towards our lives what He has given for us. But if He is not happy then the quite opposite of that is anger. And if He is anger on us what will happen we shall look after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pale wonders of this great word because we have nothing else on this earth to continue apart from teaching the word of God. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again we come unto the grace to learn thy word. Father, the things that are prepared and kept for us on today's date, we pray that God the Holy Spirit will enlighten and challenge us by this message. Since the Lord, you are the Lord and you are the God for us, we pray that you teach us thy word according to thy will. In Christ's name we ask sovereign Lord. Amen. Opening our Bibles to Psalms 38. This chapter of 38 represents when David was out of fellowship, not using the privacy of his priesthood to confess his sins and come back, which many of the people today in the present Christendom are not doing. They have been given this great privacy of your priesthood to confess your sins and get back to the work of Lord God. We resist. We think by doing false gimmicks of the pastor teachers in the pulpits today, who claim to do so, saying that you do this, or you pay some huge money, or you go and do some good works, you could be absolutely getting back into the fellowship. But in return, they aren't getting back into the fellowship, neither they are making themselves to be in the work of the Lord. So here, David, 30, in Psalms 38, we find he did not use the principle of rebound. His things which he went along in the standards of Bathsheba, his things in which he went along to pay back fourfold, until he could use rebound when Nathan could come and talk to him the things pertaining to this which has happened within one year of his work what he has done. We find claiming to God the Father that the way how he really punishes those whom he loves. The way what we read in Hebrews chapter 12. Him who loves he chats on the top he says through Proverbs as well as in Hebrews 12 so that the one whom he has loved, he chastens up because for the purpose of correcting us since we have partaken in his elements. Not only the Eucharist table, we find that we have partaken in his divine nature. We have been partaking of the things pertaining to God's will on this earth. So since we have been partaking of his divine nature and other things as well, 
how great it would be for us to correct our lives to the will of God. So he says, a psalm of David to bring to remembrance. The word remembrance is nothing but zakir, to recall, to recall to mind. O Lord, rebuke me not in their wrath. The word rebuke is nothing but to judge or to decide or to correct us. And if Lord God would do that in his wrath, then what would happen, you know very well. So David cries and cries to Lord God saying, Lord God, do not rebuke me in the anger. The simple word called as Ketseth, Q-E-T-S-E-P-H, the word meant to say, to be in anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure, the word Yaser meant to say discipline, and then in thy hot displeasure, displeasure meant to say Kema, C-H-E-M-A-H, that is meant to say in your hot rage of anger against us, for your arrows stick fast in me. The word arrows meant to say chets, C-H-E-T-S, and figuratively it meant to say like a thundering bolt, wherewith we find even in Ephesians 6, Satan is also putting his fiery darts of arrows or missiles upon us. So what we do, we take the large shield of faith. The translation says arrows, but we find over here as missiles in the Greek. But over here in the Hebrew, we find this word chasach meant to say, not just arrow, but it is called for us not, it is called for us to be like a thundering bolt of Lord God's nature. Can anyone stand against the thundering bolt when there is a heavy rain? You know how the thundering will be, lightning and the thundering. The same thing he describes in Ezekiel 1, the same thing he describes in Isaiah 6, the presence of God the Father, the voice, if we read that yesterday in Psalms 29, the Lord God's essence, the Lord God's voice, the Lord God's power, how it would be. Man may make up his missiles and he may th think that he can attack. Those have been compared to Satan in, his, in Ephesians 6, but Lord God's thundering bolts, arrows are being compared to the nature. That meant to say what? Man can create and cook up for himself his angers, but God the Father, we naturally, when we rebel against Lord God, he gives his great righteous judgment upon us, so that we cannot claim, Lord, why have you done this to me? The sooner the better we wake up to our faults, the sooner the better we come back and realize we are not walking according to the will of God. The greater we spend our time in doing the will of God by understanding that we are not in the will of God, by walking in alien terms in this world, though we are as Christians, the righteous judgment of Lord God will be like a thunderbolt. And we can understand from that, that there is no excuse. Satan at least will make up like the standards of missiles. It's not arrows, we read that in Ephesians 6, but it is a missile. Against such missiles, you learn the word of God and keep it up as faith. Because we have known what are the thundering bowls of Lord God when the psalmist says in Psalm 119. I have heard your testimonies. These are my proof, O Lord. This is the things which I have in my journey. Therefore I meditate upon thy word all day long. How I love thy law. He goes on to preach for us many things. Judge me not according to the righteous judgments because he knows very well how great are the righteous judgments of Lord God and none can stand because it will be like a thundering bowl. And many people do not understand today in the present Christendom why God the Father will judge us according to his righteous standards. And whenever he judges us, he knows very well why he is judging because he has all the facts in his hand. So here David claims, Lord, your arrows are sticking to my flesh. Missiles at least you may go on for bunker to say yourselves. But the thundering bowls of Lord God, who can say, except we come back in grace to ask for forgiveness before the Lord. Except we realize how our wretched sinners we are and come back to the gracious throne of Lord. Till we could not realize those things, we cannot come back to the work of God. So dear brethren, here it teaches to us, your arrows are like a thundering bowl to me. Your arrows are a righteous judgments to me. The things what he has done with Bathsheba, he knows very well. And the way how he gave an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme his name. And this thing displeased the Lord, we read in First Chronicles 15 for us. And when in his anger he said, fourfold I will pay them back. The revolt of his son, the same incident in his wife, Tamar, daughter Tamar. 
And there are so many things what we can learn. The battle which was always continuing. And the same thing what they did with the concubines. David did secretly but it came back to open up in every way. So we need to look. The arrows of your Lord. The thundering bolt judgments of your Lord are always righteous. So he continues further to teach for us. That your arrows are sticking to me up. And furthermore he says. And thy hand presseth me sore. The word stick fast meant to say to go down to deep inside to penetrate. And thy hand that is yad the power of you. Presseth me sore. That is what having in him mental agony and depressions. That's what today people may think they can solve many problems with the money what they have. But those are not problems at all. The real problems are spiritual weaknesses what you're going through in your life without having the word of God. Men are happy to consider themselves that they can solve these problems by XYZ standards. But the real problems begins when you are spiritually weak. Physical weakness are nothing. When the hand of Lord God is against us, when it is pressing us sore into deep, it is showing to us to understand what a magnetism of mental depressions the world is going through today in the present Christendom of COVID-19 pandemic sicknesses. But a believer is not destined to die under such things, or in fact, the sicknesses of your flesh as well. The believer is destined to die like a martyr unto my Christ. You have a meaningful purpose and life in the Lord God. For that cause he has purchased you on the cross. If the hand of Lord God is suppressing you, that meant to say you need to realize what is the sins that is against him. God the Father has said us to take up your cross and follow me every day. It's not just to take up our cross now, but we need to run like the way how Samuel, for the first time when he called in 1 Samuel 3, he ran unto Eli. And why Lord God, the Holy Spirit specifically records those words for us so that we could learn our life. Are we running daily carrying our cross to the Lord God or not? Then you are a sinner. Therefore, the hand of Lord God presseth you into deep. And you don't understand that. You think because your bed was not good, so you slept onto the left side whole night, so you got some pain. You say the food what I ate was not good to me, so my digestive tract system has got troubled. And I began the constipation problem. But you really under, not understand that the hand of Lord God is sore against you. Because we have a third verse which should really prick our hearts to understand. Why are we suffering with such sicknesses in this life? In spite of Isaiah 53, when he cleansed all our sins, all our iniquities, all our standards of depressions and oppressions, why we are still going through such kind of pain in our lives because he says for us in Isaiah in Psalms 38 3 there is no soundness in my flesh the word soundness is not what the people would think it should be the word for us called as Tami'im do you know what is this word Tami'im it has a lot of meaning dear brethren Tami'im meant to say to be flawless before the fall how Satan was in Ezekiel 28 verses 15 and following, so is the nature called as Tamam being taken from Tamim. And the word Tamam meant to say to be complete, to be absolutely accomplishing and to be in, in, the, in the standards of whole perfectness, integrity, to act uprightly and to be in its entirely finished that's the word what we find for us called as soundness as the word says over here. But we have the word for us to understand as taken from the word tamam or tamim. And that word meant to say having for us complete soundness or flawlessness. And you know what does he say? There is no flawlessness in my flesh. That meant to say what? There is always some fault things in my flesh. But God the Father has designed to understand every believer should be flawless in comparison with Isaiah 53, which we are discussing to you. In comparison with Exodus 5, when we read those verse number 3 and verse number 17 as well. You are idle, you are idle. We read that in verse number 10 as well, isn't it? The word meant to say, you are Rafa, you are Rafa. And every believer in Christ Jesus being born again is a mind of Rafa. 
He is readily available to do the work of God. As the one who is readily available to, obe to be obedient as a servant of God at the call of God. You know, that's what we don't find today in our pulpits. Men being ready, available to do the will of God, no matter what our pain may be for them to do it. The bond slaves are there, in spite of their pain, they are readily there to do the will of God and work of God. No rebellion, no side talk, no mannerism of murmuring or grudging. No arrogant way of thinking. Simply obeying the voice, simply obeying the word. That's what we have been designed in the Lord to be. In spite of all your odd infinite circumstances, you have been called to obey the voice of God. And have you ever seen such kind of a faithful steward for you in your life? And if there is a steward for you like that, you would be readily available to give her everything or give him everything, isn't it? Because they are humble enough to do whatever we command them, in spite of all or infinite circumstances what she may go through. And God the Father has designed the church to be so. Every believer to be so as his faithful steward. But what is happening? No soundness in the flesh. We have to be readily available to the work of God. Rafa, Rafa, that's what he says. As a believer in Christ, having a complete spiritual health for you and daily graduating and renovating that health by the standards of the thinking of Christ. Romans 12, 1, 2 and 3 and Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 3 through 4. Every day growing up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. Second Peter three eighteen, We have been said to be available to the work of God in those standards. As a humble stewards, therefore, Satan knows very well you have been given this ready mind. That ready mind, what we claim to say for you, as idle, idle in the Greek or in the Hebrew or in the English, but in the Hebrew it is meant to say Rafa, Rafa. The same thing we read in Deuteronomy 31 8. He shall not fail us. That meant to say what? He will not cause us to fall into sickness. That's what we read that in Deuteronomy 31 8. We read that word Rafa, and then we read the word forsake as Azab. And why these things for us, dear brethren? Because you have to be a ready steward. You have to be a ready humble servant to the Lord. And he says, since you all will be like that at the moment of salvation, Satan knows very well. He diverts your mind not to do the will of God, neither the work of God, but rather it will make you to fall through the details of life. And therefore he says, I shall not give you the straw now. You need to prepare your own straw and you need to prepare the same number of bricks. And the elders of the Israel go there and ask to Pharaoh saying that what is this evil you are doing to us? And then he says, you are idle, you are idle, you are Rafa, you are Rafa. Therefore you are free now to go and to give sacrifice or proclaim divine judgments of God in the wilderness. So he says for them, since you are idle, the word meant to say you are Rafa, Rafa. That means you are cleant and healthy, you are cleant and healthy. And you can do the divine judgments of the Lord. So I will divert your mind to the details of life. So that you shall not proclaim the divine judgments of God. Because we, the church age, in fact, indeed beginning with the Israelites. He says for us in Amos 3, living Israelites and you not anyone. The reason for choosing the Israelites was to do the will of God and the work of God. The same manner of things what we learn over here as well for us. The church has been used for what? Now to proclaim the divine judgments of God. By making them disciples of all the nations. By turning out from them who are not ready to the will of God and doing the work of God has been designed for us. As the way that the word says, let the dead bury the dead. Because we have now, as Christ our Lord of God says, on that coin, what inscription has been there? If it is for Caesar, let it be for Caesar. If it is God, let it be God. On every believer, we have an inscription of Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, inscribed upon us. So we belong to Christ. We need to serve the Lord. So these things we need to learn very carefully. And yet we are not proclaiming the divine judgments because we haven't grown up to be the work of God yet. We haven't grown up till to become the scribes of the law. So he says the word for us, there is no soundness in my flesh. There is no rafa in my flesh. Why? First of all, he is out of the will of God. 
is not doing the will of God by coming back to use rebound. And second, we read very carefully the things what has been recorded and kept for us to understand here. In Psalms 38.3, we read, It is not just the will of God. There is no soundness in my flesh, the word called as basar, that is what the body, because he uses the word called as paniim, and the word because is not a reason. But in the Hebrew we find paniim, in thy faces, or before your face, I am always looking to you so that I am getting you anger. The English says, because of thy anger. But the Hebrew says, before your face, when you look at me, I am always causing you to get anger on me. The word called as za'ab. And it went to say, fury, because of God's displeasure with sin. That's why he is anger on us. So, he is expressing his indignation. He is expressing his every mannerism of anger. He is expressing his abominable thing. Because of his God's displeasure, what we are running around in our sin. And we are not able to understand that we are already in the process of such sin. And why there is no soundness in your flesh? First of all, Satan diverts your mind not to know the word of God. It gives you to work three days more. It says, I will not give you the straw, yet you have to become to perform in you the wood or the bricks, which the same number which you have to do. So what you do, you will get occupied in the world. That's what Satan first comes to plan. And then later on, what do we find? We find Satan making you to enjoy the details of life in the lustful patterns of the old sin nature, stating that we had a hard day today. Let's take a break. Go and enjoy in the lustful patterns of the wolves in nature. We find that in 1 John 2, 15 through 16. So we need to be aware about our enemies' arrows. We need to be aware about our enemies' missiles. Because we have been called to understand. There is no strength in our flesh. There is no goodness in our flesh. Because we are constantly before the face of the Lord God. Our vessels of anger to Him. We are not a humble stewards. We are not already obedient workers. No matter what, first to do the will of God, we have not come up. We just love to have our reasons. We just love to have our excuses and tell them such and such, such and such, such and such. Because that's what we are. That's what man is always. First he looks upon his pleasure, his convenience. Then he thinks about the work of God. If at all, he thinks weekly once is enough for me to be in the church. If at all he thinks, what is the point of going to the church every day? Because there is no good pastor teacher for us. But have you carried your cross every day to the will of God? Know you not when Solomon prayed unto the Lord God, we read that in First Kings. This is what we don't pray to the Lord God, the prayer which has to be pleased in the sight of God. In chapter 3, in verse number 10, first of all we read, the thing what Solomon prayed, pleased unto the Lord. And from there on the real life begins. The speech, what we call the word dabar, meant to say the word what he spoke, utterance. Pleased. The word meant to say to be pleasing. Yateb. In the eye of the Lord. That Solomon had asked this. And then God said unto him, Because you have asked this thing, the word called us to inquire, Sha'el, and you haven't not asked for long life, Neither you have asked the riches of for thyself, nor you have asked the life of thine enemies, but you have asked for understanding. Do you know what is this understanding? Bina. And in our structure, what we are developing in Isaiah 11 to, when we consider the seven spirits in one spirit, this is the spirit number five in the descending order. He is not asking just knowledge, the second one, or the fear of the Lord, the first one. Or is not asking the strength, the third one. Either he's asking the counsel, the fourth one. What is he asking? He's asking the fifth one. Understanding, says, Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And be now about that, he says, you have asked for thyself understanding to discern, that is what, to shamma, to hear and to listen and to obey, what are the judgments and the ordinances of Lord God. That's what we are looking upon, the arrows of Lord God as a thunderbolt righteous judgment. Not like the enemy, because the enemy is just a creation. God the Father is a creator. So here we find this word which goes on to teach for us, the judgments of Lord God to have such discernment in you. So he says, 
Behold, I have done according to thy words. The word done is called as asa, to build up. I have built up according to thy words. The words again, Daber. I have Nathan, the word meant to say, to give you, to come into existence. Number one, he says, not just a being or understanding heart. First, he says, I have given you a wise and an understanding heart. The word wisdom for us is the sixth spirit, Kokma. And then he says, an understanding heart. Heart, the fifth one, what he claimed, you claimed the fifth one, but I've given you the sixth one as well, along with the fifth one. <laughs> That's what my Lord, my rock is always. In Matthew 18, he says, where two or three have been gathered in his name, I am there in the midst of them. In Revelation 3, 19 and 20, a reborn verse, he claims them to come back. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would hear my voice, let him enter in. A rebellious professing Christian down today into the standards of apostasy. Yet he stands there. Not only giving you where two or three people could be there in their presence, I am, but he also teaches to us that is always ready to go ahead further than what you demand. He also wants those professing rebellion Christendom people, Revelation 3, 19 and 20, standing at the door and knocking them so that he can have supper with them. But what has happened? They rebelled again and again. They go on to do rebellion again and again to the law. So here as well he says, Lord God, I haven't just given you an understanding heart, what you want, but also I've gave you a wise and understanding heart. And furthermore, he goes on to teach for us, so that there was none like thee before. That meant to say there will be no one before your eyes like that. And furthermore, he claims for us that neither after thee shall anyone arise, the word arise meant to say, to be in the standards called as to comb, that is to establish. And when Christ our Lord our God says for us that when he was on this earth, he said to them, greater than the standards of Solomon wisdom, I am here. The queen of Sheba came all the way to know the Solomon's wisdom, but greater than him, I am here. And yet they couldn't know the Lord who was a greater wisdom man than Solomon. So here Solomon asks for a discernment heart to judge the judgments of Lord God clearly. But Lord our God gives him Kakma, the spirit of wisdom, number six. And he also gives him the spirit of understanding with a wise heart, that is number five, so that they could never be before like that. And those seven spirits again operated in the humanity of my Christ. And now those seven spirits are operating in every believer in Christ Jesus of our Lord. That's the privilege we have for us. That's the great power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, operating in us. But we don't come to ask to Lord God the Father every day. You have any flawless in your body, what you do? You check up with the standards of your doctor. You check up with the standards of your physician or anyone whoever is there. But you don't go to check up the things with Lord God. And that's what it is happening in our pulpits today. You don't check up according to the will of God. You don't want to look what is the mind of Christ. You are just considering yourselves to be in the standards of lies. And you think, the reason why I'm not flawless because I couldn't eat proper food. The reason why I'm flawless because of such and such. But you are not understanding. Before the faces of Lord God, His anger is burning on you. And the reason why His anger is burning on you is purely because you haven't done the will of God. And people today in the present Christian 